Hey guys, so I've been asked lately to do some uh, high probability type questions. I brought to mind the impossible maths question from a couple of years ago. So this was on an Ed Excel paper. It caused a bit of an outrage between students, parents, and even teachers. They were just saying it was too hard. These days though, this could happily live on a 9 to 1 paper. So I thought, well, what an ideal opportunity then to go through this question. So we're talking about sweets in a bag, which you wouldn't think can be too bad, really. But things certainly need to escalate. So we've got the question here then. Uh, so there are N sweets in a bag. That's important to start off with. Uh, six of the sweets are orange. The rest of the sweets are yellow. So, before we even go any further, let's just break down some stuff from that. So, we've got N. We would if we had our pen out. We've got N total. We've got six orange. And the rest, the rest of the sweets in the bag are yellow. So how do we express that algebraically? Well, if there are N sweets in a bag, six of them are orange, the rest of them are yellow. Let's just think about N as a normal number. If there was 10 sweets in a bag, six were orange, there would be 10 take away six, so there would be four yellow. We don't know what N is though, so we just write that algebraically as N minus six yellow. Okay, so that's those three sentences turned into maths. It's going to be useful to us. So, Hannah takes a random sweet from the bag. She eats it. Good times. Hannah then takes another sweet from the bag and she eats that one too. Slow down, Hannah. Okay, so the probability that Hannah eats two orange sweets is one third. We want to show that n squared minus n minus 90 is equal to zero. So things definitely escalate there pretty quickly. We go from a girl eating two sweets to, well, where's this quadratic come from? So the information is there. It's just pretty hidden. So we're told the probability that she takes, that she takes two orange sweets is one third. So what we need to think is right, how can we turn that probability into algebra? If we do that, then we can uh, get ourselves an equation and do what we like to do with equations. So what on her first selection then, what is the probability of her taking an orange sweet? Well, there are six orange sweets out of N total sweets. So the probability of her picking an orange sweet on her first selection is N over 6. Then the probability of picking another orange sweet, well there's going to be one less orange, so 6 minus 1 is 5. There's also one less sweet overall. So we've got 5 over N minus 1. Now that might look completely useless to us at the moment. The reason we're multiplying these probabilities is remember with successive events you do do just that. So let's multiply these two fractions and see what we get. So up on top 6 times 5 is 30. On the bottom n times n minus 1 is n squared minus n. So at that point we might be a little bit happier because we've got, hello, we've got an n squared minus n. Now remember what we've done there, we've worked out the algebraic probability of picking two orange sweets. We know the numeric probability is one third. So we can uh, set 30 over n squared minus n 
we can set that equal to one third. So all that we're saying there is the probability of getting two orange sweets is equal to the probability of getting two orange sweets. So we don't really want fractions involved. So I think the first thing I would do here is multiply by this three. So we would get 90. Hello, there's our 90. We would get 90 over n squared minus n is equal to one. We would then multiply by n squared minus n, which would give us 90 is equal to n squared minus n. Now we've got everything we need here. We just now need it all on the same side together. So we take away the 90 and that will give us n squared minus n minus 90 is equal to zero. So there we go. We've proven what we've been asked to prove. Now part B of the question asked us to work out how many sweets were in the bag to begin with. So let's do just that. Okay then, so to work out how many sweets were in the bag to begin with, we need to solve our quadratic being equal to zero. So it was at least a nice factorizable quadratic. So to factorize this bad boy, we want two brackets. Each bracket is gonna have an N. Now we've got a negative number at the end, uh, minus 90. So that tells us one number in our brackets is gonna be negative, one is gonna be positive. Now we've got minus one N in the middle. So we need two numbers that multiply to 90 that have a difference of uh, one. And the bigger of the two needs to be the negative guy because we've got n minus n in the middle. So it's going to be n minus 10 and n plus 9. So minus 10 times 9 is minus 90. Minus 10 add 9 gives us the uh, minus 1 n in the middle. So this gives us two possible solutions, but only one of them makes sense in context of our question. So either n is 10 or n is minus 9. Doesn't make sense though to have minus 9 sweets in a bag. So we ignore that solution. The number of sweets in the bag then was n equals 10. There we go guys, the impossible maths GCSE question solved. Was this video helpful? If so, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment letting me know how you get on. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you never miss any videos. For any further information, you can find me on Facebook or Twitter. Search for Maths with Mouth. Cheers, guys.